So Kelly from Alton, Illinois, joins her. Okay, what's your question? Well, my question is regarding religion and spirituality. I had a Catholic upbringing. I married a Catholic, and we we're raising our children this way. In reading books such as Tolley's, I've really op it's really opened my eyes up to a new way of thinking, a new form of spirituality that doesn't always align with the teachings of Christian Christianity. So my question is to you, Oprah, how have you reconciled these spiritual teachings with your Christian beliefs? Oh, the question's to me. I was, I was resting knowing it was going to be about <laughs> uh, I've reconciled it because I was able to open my mind about the, um, the absolute indescribable hugeness of that which we call God. Um, I took God out of the box because I grew up in the Baptist church and there were, you know, rules and, you know, belief sy systems and doctrine. And um, I happened to be um, sitting in church in my late 20s and I was going to this church where you had to get there at, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning or you couldn't get a seat and a very uh, charismatic minister and everybody was just, you know, into the sermon. And uh, this great uh, minister was preaching about how great God was and how omniscient and omnipresent and God is everything. And then he said, and the Lord thy God is a jealous God. And I was, you know, caught up in the rapture of that moment until he said jealous. <laughs> and something struck me. Just, and I was like, uh, I think about 27 or 28. I was thinking, God is all, God is omnipresent, God is all. And God's also jealous, jealous, God is jealous of me. Um, and something about that didn't, didn't feel right in my spirit because I believe that God is love and that God is in all things. And so that's when the, the, the search for something more than doctrine uh, started to stir within me. And I love this quote that uh, Eckhart has. Uh, this is one of my favorite quotes in uh, chapter one, where he says, man made God in his own image. The eternal, the infinite, and unnameable was reduced to a mental idol that you had to believe in and worship as my God or our God. Now, I think that's very eloquently put uh, by Eckhart Tolle in chapter one, but that is exactly what I was feeling when I was... Um, you know, you know, sitting in church that, that, that Sunday listening to the preacher. believe is that Jesus came to show us Christ consciousness, that Jesus came us to show us the way of the heart and that what Jesus was saying that to show us the higher consciousness that we're all talking about here. Jesus came to say, look, I'm going to live in the body, in the human body, and I'm going to show you how it's done. These are some, some principles and some laws that you can use to live by to, to know that way. And when I, when I started to recognize that, that Jesus didn't come, in my belief, even as a Christian, I don't believe that Jesus came to start Christianity. And respond to that. that that's one of the biggest questions that we have um, coming into our message boards about um, the same thing that Kelly is, is, is addressing here from Alton, about spirituality and religion. This is not about trying to tell you how to believe. And how do you... Um, advise people to reconcile this with their religious beliefs? Well, religion can be an open doorway into spirituality, and religion can be a closed door mm -hmm. that prevents you from go going deeper. Mm -hmm. if, so the, I love reading the New Testament, and some, I also read the Old Testament. Sometimes there's some incredible jewels mm -hmm. in there. And when I 
went through this inner transformation and for the first time accidentally I picked up a copy of the New Testament at my mother's place mm -hmm. and I started reading and I immediately recognized the deep truth that is there and I realized the truth that is deeper, that is expressed in what Jesus said is much deeper than what you, how the church interprets it. There is a depth to it and it reflects your own depth when you read it. So the, there's no conflict between, between this teaching, which is purely spiritual, mm -hmm. and any religion, because if you go deep enough into your religion, then you all get to the same place. It's a question of going deeper. So there's no conflict here. The moment you say only my belief or our belief is true, and you deny other people's beliefs, then you've you've adopted an ideology mm -hmm. and then religion becomes a closed door but potentially religion can also be an open door share this with you too, uh, uh, Kelly. There is another book by a woman named Elizabeth Lesser. It's called The Seeker's Guide, where she talks about the new spirituality versus the old. So I just wanted to, yeah, this is on page 51 and 52 of, of uh, Elizabeth Lesser's book called The Seeker's Guide. And she talks about old spirituality versus the new spirituality. And she says the old was the old way is the hierarchy has the authority. Church, church authorities tell you how to worship in church and how to behave outside of church. The new spirituality is that you are your own best authority. As you work to know and love yourself, you discover how to live a more spiritual life. The old is God and the path to worship him have already been defined and all you need to do is follow the directions. The new is being able to listen within for your own definition of spirituality, your deeper longings are your compass on the search. And the old says exactly what Eckhart was saying, that there is only one path, it's the right way and all other ways are wrong. And the new spirituality says that many paths lead to spiritual freedom and peace. You have a rich array of gems from which to uh, draw illumination. The world's religious traditions, mythology, psychology, healing, method, scientific wisdom, your own experience, and that you can begin to string a necklace all your own. 